Hey guys, picked up this uh, Collins one and three quarters uh, hunter's axe. It's uh, a fairly popular axe on the internet for people to trash as a, a bad quality axe. And I wanted to take a look at it because I did refurb those old Collins axes and uh, you know they really turned out quite well and are very functional and very useful. And I wanted to look at this new one, which I purchased really just for comparison purposes, really just to take a look and show you uh, what you get when you buy a $15 budget little axe or hatchet. So first off, let's take a look at this bad boy. We got some problems here. As much as I tried to be positive and hope that I would get a good one <laughs> and that uh, there wouldn't be issues, you know, I... There are issues. Um, first of all, handle is dangerous at best. We have some grain lines that end here and go up to here. That will make the handle split eventually. You know, you can wrap it in duct tape and that might give you some extra time, but this handle is going to break eventually and it could be dangerous. So it's something, you know, right off the bat. I don't mind having to put a new handle on something if I really like the head, but. You know, with this one, I bought it anyway because I really wanted to test out the axe, and this is the best of the bunch, to be honest. Um, so, right off the bat, grain on it is kind of twisted. It's not the best. It's twisted around on both ends a little bit. You got a bit of a knot there on the swell, and there's, you know, kind of goes off at a weird angle here really not the best not what I would uh, recommend is safe okay so say you do find one in the store that's got a really good handle or you luck out and you order one online and you get one with a great handle what's the next problem I'm seeing well some people online complained about the head fitting and, and all that and I didn't have any issues with this one the head's nice and straight it fits very good it uses this uh, this round wedge fits in nice and tight. Um, it actually has a uh, fairly nice uh, profile to it. As you can see, it's got a nice kind of, for a cheap axe, it's got a really nice kind of thin bit to it. So I'm really kind of happy with the shape of it. I'm really hoping this is uh, salvageable because I really like the shape of it. Second strike is the edge. It's uh, basically sharpened like a uh, pocket knife. It's just got a little tiny flat ground edge bevel in there which is really no good when it comes to uh, cutting. Um, it's good for you know shaving down wood and things like that but this is something you want to use for taking down limbs and small trees. It's, it's not going to do it because that edge being a, a point like that it's just going to kind of hang up in the wood and not cut very well at all. So in order to make this serviceable, you're going to have to definitely reprofile the edge, uh, give it a convex edge and uh, pull it back. And that's strike two. Strike three, this thing is Mexican made, which I don't have an issue with imported goods, but odds are, you know, if they really screwed up the edge that bad and they put this crumbing a handle on it my guess is that the heat treatment is probably really bad also now there's no way to really test the heat treatment until you start really using this thing and sharpening it and when you start sharpening it you will eventually know when you run out of good usable bit you know you will feel it you'll hit that soft steel and it's done so my guesstimate is this is not going to have 30 40 years of use in it this is going to have one year, two year, maybe tops, you know, five years of, of use if I really take it easy on it. Um, I wanted to like this, guys. I really wanted this to be a nice piece of budget gear that I could show you guys and say, oh, wow, this is 15 bucks and, you know, it really performs pretty well. Truth is, it really didn't. Um, cutting was okay, you know, taking it into trees. You know, it's for its weight, it didn't cut in as good as it should. It uh, didn't limb as good as it should. It splits okay, but that's because it is, you know, a nice shape on the head. 
I think the shape of the head is more important for splitting, whereas you know that nice convex uh, edge is more important for for cutting and limbing. So it splits good. You know, if you're just looking for something to split some kindling for a backyard fire, this is great. You know, this is not something I would recommend for bushcraft at all. It's you know, you're going to have to put a lot of work into it to make it serviceable, and then just how long is that edge going to last? How much hardened steel do you have? You know, I've, I wouldn't doubt it if they only hardened, you know, that much of the steel. I wouldn't doubt it the slightest little bit. And that won't last you long. You use that hard a couple seasons, sharpen it, you know, get a couple chips in there, and your serviceable um, amount of steel is, is done. So, a lot of concerns about the steel. I don't like, you know, I, you know, I don't know what it is now with everything having to be coated. You know, I, I, we're so lazy we can't take care of our tools, so we got to put this coating on everything. This is nothing but added friction. This is rough. It's almost like sandpaper. This is going to add friction to your cutting, which will slow down your axe, which will make it cut less. I really don't like it. I'd rather just have nice smooth metal on there, like um, the S-Wing. No, like the S-Wing's got this like varnish finish on it or whatever, but uh, there isn't a ton of friction on it. This, on the other hand, you can hear it. It feels like sandpaper. That's gonna, you know, it's not good. Don't like it. You know, I wish we could just go back to the age when things just were steel and you had to put oil on. <laughs> um, so I don't like it. You know, it fits good. The handle fits good. It's very tight. It's wedged in there really good. I'm really happy with all that. But just quality wise, you know, even if I replace the handle, which shouldn't be a big deal at all, a couple of bucks, even if I reprofile the edge, say that takes a couple of hours, you know, will this ever be a great hatchet? Probably not, because in the end, if I spend 15 bucks on this hatchet, say five bucks on a new handle, and a couple hours of my time reprofiling and doing what I want to it, in the end, I'm halfway to an S-Twing. Why bother? You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna spend 20 something bucks, why not add a little bit of money and get an S-Twing, which is a really good quality hatchet. That's what I don't get. You know, it's, you know, the S-Twing's not the best on earth. You know, as you can see, this one's got some issues with the finish kind of got some rust underneath it or something. So I don't know if that lacquer or whatever, they got moisture underneath it, it kind of rusted underneath it. You know, and it kind of, you can see the lacquer's kind of peeled off a little bit in places, but it's, it's not a horrible issue, but it cuts really good. The cutting performance on the S-Twing is really good. And it will probably last a long time. This, on the other hand, who knows? You know, the handle could break any time you use it. The steel is questionable and all that. So I really feel like, guys, if you've... If you're going to put 20 bucks into this, why not put the extra 15 or 20 and buy an S-Twing or buy a better quality? You know, like maybe one of the uh, cold steel hatchets or axes, because you know it's not there. But you know what, guys? If if you're a really light user and you're just using this for backyard campfires, maybe taking down the occasional limb that falls on your garage, this will probably be a very good tool for you if you're willing to sharpen it right and and uh, take extra care with the handle if you have a crummy handle. But other than that, you know, it unfortunately did not beat the, uh, <laughs> the the bad reputation that it had on the internet. I was really hoping that it would uh, come through and be a decent product for 15 bucks, but it, it's unfortunately not. I'm a little disappointed by it, but I did buy it anyway just to show, you know, that there is no cutting corners when it comes to gear. When you buy something for 15 bucks, you're getting something for 15 bucks. But on the other hand... I just want to show you real quick. I'm going to do another video on this so you'll get to see more on this. This is actually a hatchet I bought for probably like 25 or 30 bucks and it's complete garbage. It's a Home Depot axe with a fiberglass handle. 
you know, back when those things were first kind of coming out, and I thought, oh, wow, indestructible handle, wow. And I bought this sucker. And, you know, it's got some dings and stuff like that in the handle, but overall it's held pretty well. This is the worst effing steel I have ever dealt with in my entire life. It has a horrible profile. It's almost like rounded off. And no matter how hard I try to sharpen this thing, it takes an edge, you hit it once, it's gone. I swear to God, this thing has no hardened steel in it. It's just complete trash. And I spent like 25 bucks on this thing 10 years ago. So money does not always get you a good ax. This Collins is way better than that other one at $15. So in the end, if you're looking at a cool, uh, Coleman's or a Kuglin's or something like that, that are like eight, 10 bucks, you're wasting your money. Spend an extra five and get the, the Collins. You're looking at the Collins and if you've got extra money, get yourself the S-Twig. You know? If you got the money, get the quality. I guess that's all I gotta say.